Bionic Helmet Tutorial by David J. Guyton at ArmorTemplates.com. This is made of 20 gauge steel and some other stuff I'll explain as we move along. It matches my bionic arm. Uh, clearly you can't have a, a real bionic helmet or head because if you removed your head you'd be dead. But anyway, uh, I thought it was cool so if you guys like it leave a comment below telling me what you think. Like and subscribe as well. Grab your hammers, let's get started. Get your template by clicking under the video or in the video, or going directly to armortemplates.com. If you haven't seen the bionic arm tutorial, click here and check that out as well. I got this little head mannequin from Amazon for about 20 bucks. Uh, this came in very handy for me to, to build this thing. Uh, not necessary for you guys to have, but you'll see me using it quite a bit. You can see the pieces I have cut out. I don't have these parts cut out yet. I'm waiting for those until we get some shape started. I'm using my dishing stump to just uh, curve a few pieces. This is a sledgehammer head, which I'm going to be using to uh, round the, the ends. Looking good. You can see the difference in the sides here. And we're just going to fit this against the head a couple of times. Um, this thing is not exactly the same shape as my head, so I had to fit it against myself as well. Um, but you know, it worked out pretty well. Here I'm beginning to fit the outer faceplate to the inner faceplate. Here I've got a masonry chisel in a vise. Just so I can do a little bit more uh, detail work on the edges here. Here I've got a hammer in a vise to do some more detail work. By the way, next week on Friday I'll have another video coming out. This time a different faceplate to fit this helmet. I'll also have a template available with 10 different faceplates for this helmet. Using a Dremel tool with a cutout wheel, I'm cutting out all the parts I waited for. Now that the face is shaped. Still very rough, but I'm going to use a metal cutting bit in the Dremel tool to trim the rest of it off and get it just right. Takes a while, but it works fine. Make sure to uh, file the edges. You don't want any sharp stuff next to your skin. I rounded the top and the bottom of this thing, as you can see. And aside from cutting it out, um, it's basically done. Uh, here I'm adding just a little bit of flare to the, the top of the, I guess, nose area you uh, would see here. This 9-volt um, battery did not work out very well for me. It, it works and it fits and all, but it's very close to my face. So I would suggest you guys using a, uh, a pair of watch batteries instead of a 9-volt. So don't do what I did. Don't make that mistake. Here I'm just gluing it on. This is a piece of plumber, plumbing pipe. Uh, I've just cut it down and spray painted it black. And this is uh, just to make this little optional piece on the side. But if you want to breathe in space, you need this thing. So be sure to put that on. Here I'm doing the dishing for the helmet tops. Um, you've seen me do this a million times. Uh, well, maybe not a million times, a couple times. Um, and I get a lot of questions about it still, so um, I guess uh, I, I'm, I'm going to show you here. Th this is about as good as you can get it here in this in this condition. This area I'm circling here is where you want to work it the hardest. Um, that's basically the hardest part. So you can see here that the halves still have a bit of a, a, a peak to the dome. Uh, we're trying to avoid that. This was sent to me by a fan who goes by the name Snow. It's an end cap for a very large pipe. This part here used to be on this side. I just cut it off and welded it together. So anyway, thanks Snow for this thing. You've made my life so much easier. Um, I know this tool is not something that everybody's going to have. You don't necessarily need it. You can just cut a lot of time off of what you're doing with it. So here we are. And just with a couple of taps you can see that it's already coming out uh, pretty good. I'll, I'll flip this thing over in a second you can see what, what what's happened to it. And it makes it so that it's an exact uh, half of a sphere. 
instead of having to kind of guess at it. You can see the top there is worked, and it, once you work it long enough, it looks like this. So it saves me a lot of time in planishing, and I'm really glad I've got this thing. So thank you, Snow. Of course, if you don't have that, you can just use a planishing stake and a planishing hammer like I'm doing here. Here I've got a piece of tape so I can cut this thing. Um, of course, it's going to be out of shape uh, after all this hammering and stuff, so you always have to do this trimming afterwards. Here I've got this thing on my head, and you can see it's uh, just about in my eyebrows. I would suggest going a little bit lower than that um, and marking where the faceplate, inner faceplate, would go. And also you're going to be trimming off some right around the eyes because it's not going to be straight there either. Here I'm working the mohawk piece on top to connect the two pieces of the helmet together. Now you can go all out and kind of shape this thing like I did or you can keep it a lot more simple but you just need something to hide the fact that there's two halves there instead. Here I've got some holes marked and I'm just holding the helmet together with tape and drilling the holes and then using roofing nails to rivet the thing together one nail at a time. So put it in there, cut it off, and then rivet it down. You've seen it a million times. Same process, very simple. Here's the helmet top finished. Looking good. Now I'm riveting on the inner faceplate. Just a couple of rivets over top of the ear. This is what I have on the inside. A lot of guys have asked um, what I use for the inside of helmets. And just a piece of foam um, glued inside of it. And on the inside of the mesh I used uh, fleece instead so you can hear through the helmet. And I just used this uh, spray adhesive to glue it in. You can cut it off afterwards to make it very neat. Here I've got some aluminum mesh like I did for the for the bionic arm and I'm going to be gluing that in too. And I got um, foam all around, glued all around wherever it would touch your face or head. Now I've got a, uh, it's not a hair dryer, it's um, a heat gun. A hair dryer may work as well. And there's it's hard to see in the video there but there's a piece of plexiglass that I'm heating up and I'm making it fit the face plate. So giving it roughly the same shape. Um, this is mirror tint, like you would get for your car. And I'm going to apply it to the back of the lens. You could also use a soap and water solution if you want perfect results. And this is Bridal Veil. It's uh, You can get it for a couple of bucks on Amazon. And I'm just hot gluing it to the uh, all the way around this. This basically catches and uh, disperses the light of the eyes. So this is, uh, I'm hot gluing in the, the light, the LEDs here now. Um, that was going to be temporary, but I watched how it's made, and uh, they use this to glue the foam into hockey masks, so I figured it was tough enough for what I'm doing. Solder all your wires together and put a little switch in it like I have here at the bottom. And like I said, you're going to want to use watch batteries though, because it's going to make it so much more comfortable. Here's a piece of foam I got glued in just to cover the, the LED so you can see instead of having light directly in your eyes. And glue foam around the rest of the faceplate and cut it off. There you go. You can see I've built up some foam here to make it fit the rest of the helmet well. And just glue in the completed lens. And I'm using these very strong rare earth magnets in three different places to secure the faceplate to the rest of the helmet. And that's it. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a, another uh, tutorial next week um, on another faceplate, and I'm going to have uh, another uh, template available of just faceplates to fit this. So stay tuned for that. So I'll have that video out next Friday. Make sure to tune in and see that. Find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash armor templates. Give the page a like. I always have contests and cool stuff going on over there, so come check it out. Come to armortemplates.com to check out all the templates I have for all the cool stuff I've built. 
Make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment below telling me what you think. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.